up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i'm go pony and today we are in the new 2020 hyundai tucson courtesy of jack g and volvo hyundai in york pa and so i'm always excited to drive hyundai suvs perhaps it's because i own one the santa fe and it has around 25,000 miles on it so far it's been absolutely perfect for me averages around 26 miles per gallon which is great in my opinion so therefore i figured i'd jump into tucson once again so what do you say let's go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so of course there will be several different trim levels for the 2020 tucson first one being the se starting at twenty three thousand three hundred and fifty dollars value starting at twenty four thousand eight hundred dollars sel for twenty five thousand seven hundred and fifty sport for twenty seven thousand nine hundred limited starts at twenty nine thousand fifty dollars and lastly the ultimate the one we are in today starting at thirty one thousand seven hundred dollars and so that was actually pricing all for the front wheel drive setup if you wanted to go the all-wheel drive route simply add fourteen hundred dollars to any of those prices which honestly isn't that bad typically manufacturers will at least add two thousand dollars minimum for an all-wheel drive setup so that's actually a decent deal but so next when it comes to the power plant there's actually two different engine setups for the tucson first one belonging to the se trim level and value trims this power plant is going to be a two liter direct injected inline four cylinder putting out 161 horsepower at 6200 rpm 150 pound feet of torque available at 4700 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through a six-speed automatic giving you mpg numbers at 23 city 28 highway for the front wheel drive 22 city 25 highway for the all wheel drive but then you have the other engine setup belonging to the sel trim level and up this one being a 2.4 liter direct injected inline four cylinder putting out 181 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 175 pound feet of torque available at 4,000 rpm once again sent to front wheels or all wheels through a six speed automatic giving you mpg numbers at 22 city 28 highway for the front wheel drive 21 city 26 highway for the all wheel drive but so now before we do any kind of fun accelerations in the tucson i did want to mention there are some driving modes for this one by the way that driving mode button is located directly behind the shifter and so i did just put it in sport mode and by the way there are a few different drive modes there's eco normal and sport essentially what they are going to do is adjust things like the throttle response shift points and actually the steering sensitivity as well but when i did just put it in sport mode it did immediately downshift for me so it is going to hold the rpms at a much higher level giving you more power on demand but so now since we are actually in that sport driving mode what do you say let's do a quick little acceleration here in our tucson and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed and there we go All right, it is, it's acceptable. It's certainly not the quickest thing in the world. And uh, Hyundai, of course, has some other options if you did want a quicker acceleration, but really that is gonna be enough for you to merge onto the highway or anything like that. It's just, I'm just thinking the Tucson could probably benefit from maybe a turbocharged engine or something like that. But nonetheless, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so you will find, of course, four wheel disc brakes on the Tucson. And as far as the braking feel goes, I've had absolutely no issues in my short test drive today. So certainly bringing the Tucson to a very nice stop in this one. Touching on suspension and handling a little bit. Up front, you're gonna get an independent McPherson strut front suspension with coil springs, gas pressurized shock absorbers, and a 24.7 millimeter stabilizer bar. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension with gas pressurized shock absorbers once again and a 23 millimeter stabilizer bar. As far as ride quality goes, it's been absolutely perfectly fine for me. I wouldn't say it's quite as smooth as the Santa Fe, the Hyundai Santa Fe, the one I have, but certainly definitely no issues there. Ride quality has been just fine. As far as the steering feel goes, I actually do like it in the sport driving mode here. It is a heavier weight to it. And so if that's not your thing. Just take it out of sport driving mode and then you got a little looser of a feel to it. But I do like that. That it does adjust the steering feel and you can notice it depending upon what driving mode that you're in so i do like that hyundai did that with the tucson cabin noise has been perfectly fine certainly no issues with exterior noises coming into the cabin so that once again is on point and touching on visibility i actually can see really good at the rear view mirror there sometimes the headrests are kind of a hindrance depending on how large and in charge they are but really with the tucson that's certainly not an issue there so that's also a plus did want to also mention that while we're on the subject of visibility 
rain sensing windshield wipers will actually come standard on the ultimate trim level that we have here today so that is kind of nice because i do believe it is going to start raining later today so maybe you guys will actually get to see them in action but for now that about rounds out the performance segment of this review let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this beautiful black 2020 hyundai tucson all right so here she is you guys the 2020 hyundai tucson on this beautiful foggy day in the mountains called black nor pearl is what the exterior color is we are going to call her black pearl the black pearl from Pirates of the Caribbean. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and start up front here. Front grille is actually gonna differ amongst the trim levels. Additional chrome accenting you can actually find on the limited and ultimate trim levels. Of course, that's you're seeing that additional chrome accenting with the bars across the middle there, as well as the perimeter of that front grille. So that's gonna differentiate itself a little bit. To the sides, projector headlights you can find with the SE value and SEL trim levels. All trims are gonna get automatic headlights, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, they will turn on automatically for you there. So that's always nice. LED LED accent lighting you can find with the value trim level and up, LED daytime running lights with the sport trim level and up, and actually with those LED daytime running lights they do come with LED full lighting as well. So it's going to illuminate your drive a little bit better than those projector headlights, but fog lights can be found just below if you were to go with that sport trim level and up as well. But now, let's now go ahead and make our way to the side on this one. Roof rails, black roof rails can be found with the value trim level and up, chrome belt line molding with the limited and ultimate trim levels you guys can see that towards the bottom of the windows there of course rear privacy glass is going to come standard for all trim levels body colored power adjustable side mirrors will come with all trim levels as well but if you go with the value trim those side mirrors will come heated and if you go with the limited or ultimate they will come with integrated turn signals as well so that's definitely nice Taking a look down at the wheel setup, 17 inch alloys will come with the SE and value trims, 18 inch alloys with the SEL limited and ultimate, that of course is what you're looking at right now. And if you went with the sport trim level, of course, with it being a little sportier, they are upsized once again to 19 inch alloy wheels there. And so Ben, now making our way to the back of the Tucson, you guys can see that shark fin antenna found up top there, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, rear window wiper also back there, LED taillights can be had with the Sport, Limited, or Ultimate trim levels. Of course, that is what you guys are looking at right now. And just below it all, there is a single exhaust setup, no matter which trim that you actually go with. However, it will be tucked away with the 2 liter. And with the 2.4 liter, you're going to find dual chrome tips. So that, of course, is what you guys are looking at right now. So as always, here is that exhaust clip. <laughs> So now since we are around back of the Tucson, there are a few different ways you can go about opening that rear lift gate. There actually is a button on the key fob. Simply press that if you like, that's one way. There's also a button by the driver's side left knee. That is the second way. And there's actually a hands-free power lift gate if you were to go with the sport, limited, or ultimate trim. And so of course we do have that today. Once opened up, cargo capacity is gonna come in at an even 31 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course the rear seats do fold down, bumping that up to 61.9 cubic feet. And for comparison's sake, the Mazda CX-5 comes in at 59.6 cubic feet. So wanted to mention that because the Tucson is a pretty similar shape to the CX-5. A lot of the dimensions on the interior are gonna be pretty much the same, so I did want to mention that. But in-floor storage can be had in that cargo area as well. That's always nice. And there is a 12-volt power outlet back there as well. Then making our way up to the rear legroom, that is gonna come in at 38.2 inches, which actually is a good bit. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. For comparison's sake, once again, the Mazda CX-5 comes in a little bit more at 39.6 inches there. So essentially it's kind of the same, but a little bit more with the CX-5. But those rear passengers will also find a rear center armrest with cup holders for all trim levels actually across the board. And if you wanted rear ventilation for those rear passengers, you will be able to find that with the SE el trim level and up and now making our way to the front seats cloth surfaces will come with the se value sel and sport trim levels 
leather surfaces with the limited and ultimate trims. Manually adjustable seats will come with the SE, whereas eight-way power adjustable driver seat will come with the value trim level and up. And by the way, that will come with power lumbar adjustment as well. Value trim and up is also going to give you heated front seats. And if you went with the ultimate, you will also find ventilated front seats. So it's always nice. But taking a look now at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping for all trim levels. It will come leather wrapped for the sport limited and ultimate trims. And it will come actually heated as well for the super cold days in PA like today. If you were to go with the limited or ultimate trim levels, that's how you're going to get that heated steering wheel. But let's now go ahead and make our way to the startup. And let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Hyundai logo on the one side. And when you flip it around, you have lock, unlock, and getting that button to pop the rear hatch. But it is actually all keyless entry. So if you wanted to, simply just keep the key in your pocket. There's a little button on the door handles there. So just simply press that to lock and unlock this one and so once inside simply just put your phone on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there let's open them once started up tachometer is on your left speedometers on your right and there's a digital display front and center there to control what is on that digital display simply use the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there but that's going to give you a ton of different information like your tire pressure for instance all-wheel drive status it's going to be some safety features trip a trip b you can display a digital speedometer up there if you wanted to as well it's going to be a compass and a couple other things you could check out of course as well but then make your way to overall interior quality first thing i noticed when i got in this particular tucson is the panoramic sunroof and it is massive it goes way into the rear passenger seat so definitely a huge fan of that letting in so much more light for this video for instance but that is actually just going to come with the ultimate trim level that we have today but Overhead sunglass holder will come standard across the board. Dual zone climate control will come with the SEL trim level and up. We of course also have home link controls found on the rear view mirror for up to three different garage doors. That's always convenient so you don't have the garage door opener rattling on the sun visor. It's always a plus. I do like the contrasting colors in this particular Tucson that we have today. You could of course go with a couple different interior color options, but I do like the contrast black colors with this darker tan and it's actually definitely a very high end look to it. So I do appreciate that. Just in front of the shifter there, you actually have a wireless phone charger as well for our ultimate trim level at least. Two 12 volt power outlets, USB charging port, auxiliary port as well. Just behind that, you have a little little bit of storage space, dual cup holders, and of course, within your center armrest there between the driver and passenger, you have a ton of storage area as well as a little cubby area up top there as well. So all in all, the interior quality, at least of our very top trim level that we have today is really, really nice. We'll say even just above the passenger side glove box, it is a soft touch stitched leather as well. So a very high end finish actually to this particular Tucson. So I'm definitely a fan there, but now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display on this Tucson. 7 inch color touchscreen display is going to come with all trim levels but the ultimate. This particular trim level that we have today is going to give you an 8 inch color touchscreen display but there really isn't much of a difference though besides the size honestly. You're still going to get regardless of which size screen you go with Bluetooth and audio streaming as well as Android Auto and Apple CarPlay even on the bottom trim level. And that Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is nice because that means if you have a smartphone simply hook it up to the Tucson and therefore you have free navigation up on that tech display display as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs and there's a couple other compatible apps as well. However, that 8 inch color touchscreen display is also going to come with a factory navigation system, which quite honestly, you don't need if you have a smartphone anyways. You can also check out your climate control information up there as well as your radio settings. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, you will find six speakers with the SE value and SEL trim levels eight speakers if you were to go with the sport limited or ultimate and by the way that eight speaker sound system that is going to come with the subwoofer as well so i think you guys know what we have to do next we do have the eight speaker sound system today so what do you say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing this morning and let's test out the clarity of this one ton of bass you can certainly tell there's a subwoofer in this thing but clarity is actually on point as well and really there's speakers everywhere in this thing eight speakers is a definitely a decent amount so sound system is definitely on point at least if you were to go with one of those three trim levels sport limited or ultimate so i can vouch for that one 
Last thing on the tech display I wanted to mention to you guys is when of course you do put the Tucson in reverse, you will find a rear view camera for every single trim level. However, if you went with the limited or ultimate, you will actually also find a surround view camera, a 360 degree monitor I should say, with several different view options as well, including just behind it, you can kind of look to the left of the Tucson, to the right of the Tucson, and then of course all the way on to the right, you do have that surround view monitor. But that, of course, is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I always like to mention when it comes to safety, if the vehicle actually won this award, is this one did. This is an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, the very highest designation by IIHS. So you know this thing is safe to start. Front side, side curtain airbags will come standard. Latch, of course, being lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats in the back there. Rear child door locks can also be found back there as well as a tire pressure monitoring system. But some of the more exciting advanced safety features that you can find on the Tucson for all trim levels actually include a driver attention warning system, lane keep assist, and forward collision avoidance assist. Then if you went with the value trim level and up, that is actually gonna add a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert being the little car icons in your side mirrors so you don't go turning into anybody in your blind spot. Lastly, the ultimate trim that we have today is also going to add a forward collision avoidance assist system with pedestrian detection. And so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay go.